grandmother is a, a survivor of the Nakba of 1948. Um, my family is from Deir Yassin, which was one of the first villages to be massacred in Palestine. And it was kind of used as, as an example for the rest of Palestine. You know, um, if you don't get out now, we're going to do the same thing to you as we did to Deir Yassin. So for her, my grandmother, she was seven years old when she had to flee, and she remembers every detail of that night. She witnessed her grandmother, who was her caretaker, get shot between her eyes as they were trying to run away from the militias that were just taking over the village. And she had her baby brother, my grandmother's baby brother, was on the shoulders of her grandmother as they were fleeing. So when her grandmother got shot, she fell face forward and the baby that was like on her shoulders fell and hit his forehead on a rock in front of him and he died instantly. So she had to leave her grandmother and her baby brother behind and you know when that moment happens she recalls an idea or a military person coming towards her, a militia man. And so she lied down and pretended to be dead and covered her hair with her grandmother's blood so that she could get so that she can be, be looked over. Um, and passed by by the militia men, he wouldn't identify her. But of course, he did know that she was alive, and he detained her. Um, somehow or another, she ended up getting re reunited with her mother, who was pregnant at the time. And um, what what they did at Deir Yassin was they basically herded all of the villagers into two buses. One of the buses, which luckily my grandmother was on, and her mother her mother was on. Um, it took them straight to the border of Jordan, to the Jordan River, where she crossed with a sa like nothing but a sash around her waist with her family's gold like hidden inside of it that she used to build her new life for us, for, for her new family. The other bus was paraded through Jerusalem, where people threw rocks at them, spit at them, you know, insulted them and basically just humiliated them to death. These people like ended up dying, you know? So our, our family's story is basically founded on the strength of women, of Palestinian women. Their resilience, their ability to defy adversity and come back even stronger and more importantly build from it and really grow and create something beautiful from the pain that is inflicted upon them. Um, and I think that that's something that I carry with me always.